cars lined up side by side in grid formation then ready to do battle in race one this is the dtm and this is the DTM live from Norris Ring. We throw the lights to the top of the gantry as we get ready to rock and roll and race. DTM here at the Norris Ring. Already some drivers champing at the bit, trying to anticipate the lights as we go green. A good start from Kelvin van der Linde. He covered off that inside line pretty nicely. Frank Pereira is trying to have a go, and so too is Arjun Miney all the way around the outside. Arjun Miney then a big, bold move right from the start. And Arjun Miney and Frank Pereira make contact and Arjun Miney has gone around and then there is a stack and queue of cars that all get involved as something of a domino effect then in the meantime Kelvin van der Linde did exactly as he said he was going to do and that was uh, oh and there you can see the reason why the uh, uh, Mercedes there and so many bits of uh, debris laying around the uh, track we had no alternative and big big damage for Marco Wittmann the local star then and uh, as you can see, he was involved in that uh, opening lap. Not unusual, I have to say, here at the Norris Ring. Uh, so the uh, Turn 1 incident is under investigation as in comes the uh, number 12 car as well of Dev Gore. And you can see smoke pouring off the Dev Gore car, the Argemini car. Uh, so here we can see a replay then. And let's try it. Argemini was on a real mission, as you can see. Uh, diving down the outside here as they very nearly went four abreast into uh, turn number one. Arjun Miney with absolutely brilliant pace and uh, Thomas Prining just too deep into the turn. That's where Arjun Miney gets uh, turned around and in his car because he had absolutely nowhere to go. Thomas Prining running deep then and uh, this is uh, when Arjun got turned around then and uh, front ended by uh, Nico. Cars approach the uh, line and uh, we can go back to racing again, and sure enough, we do. Ricardo Pella was so keen then to uh, try and get to the outside to try and make a move. Kelvin van der Linde and Thomas Prining side by side. This time around, Thomas Prining has got the edge on Kelvin van der Linde. He closes the door on Kelvin van der Linde, and Thomas Prining uh, goes into the lead of this race, and Rennie Rast is trying to have a go to Kelvin van der Linde as well. So, Rennie Rast now on the outside, which becomes the inside and the perfect place for him to be at this stage. However, Kelvin van der Linde will have the inside other car like. involved in that as well. And uh, now we can pick it up. It looks like it's Esteban Moot to me. Uh, so the number 10 car of the Volkenhurst Mo Motorsport driver Esteban Moot involved. Let's see what happened here. Oh, my goodness me. That was a big hit from behind. And uh, then another, another little domino effect. Frank Pereira, who's just going about his business, who had absolutely no involvement in that, but the sheer speed with which Esteban Moot was uh, tail-ended enabled him to get even closer. So as the cars head towards the uh, timing line and the lights go green, again, Rico, Ricardo Feller just coming out of line uh, just to show his face. Kelvin van der Linde then uh, right behind Rene Rast. And here comes Dennis Olsen. I said he would be one to watch. Dennis Olsen, it's a long way around the outside here, but he's got full confidence in the car. He has moved up to P3, or has he? Yes, I think he has. He closes the door. And uh, Dennis Olsen then on something of a charge here. Now, right alongside Rennie Rast, but Rennie Rast will have the uh, perfect trajectory through the Scholaresses. It's a priming leading uh, from, as they all make their way out of the uh, Scholaresses now, from Rennie Rast and Dennis Olsen. And here comes Dennis Olsen once again on the outside of Rennie Rast again, a long way around here, but clearly he's very... Oh, my goodness me, that is Mauro Engel, I think, with big, big damage safety there. Car, and the car. safety car is uh, called for, and uh, I think there may have been contact with Mirko Portolotti, I don't know. Felipe Fraga, and Felipe is already... I mean, you're just, you're just very, very... Um, yeah, you, for the, you, the race ended, but also you're saying we just saw another accident there, and say your thoughts. Yeah, like, I think it's terrible, you know, like... I think we should all sit together and revise this restart thing. Uh, for me, it's the third time already, you know, like, we're always there, we always fighting, and today I, I just break in turn one, I was already, like, P7, and then, like, on when I go to the corner, I got a massive hit from behind from the BMW. I don't want uh, to even... Wait, the uh, lights to go green so that we can go racing once again. Let's do it. And ready, rest then being bogged down just a little bit and Dennis Olsen with oh and he makes contact on uh, the uh, Rennie Rast car so Thomas Prining trying to uh, get up the road 
Uh, Dennis Olsen will try and get to the inside now, and is that Ricardo Feller who's making a fantastic uh, pitch for this as well, and almost puts himself up into uh, P3. He's got Rennie Rast right alongside him. And uh, great driving from uh, Ricardo Feller and an unbelievable drive from Mirko Bortolotti who's just been able to take advantage of everything as we see contact once again through the Scholaresses. This time it's Lucas Auer that is the victim with the front of his car ripped off. Uh, you know what that means. And I don't want to say it to you and it's not the only incident as well on this really tight circuit. Well, uh, collisions and contact being made everywhere. And that's done for uh, the number 63 car of Mirko Bortolotti. So too, really, on it was uh, Dennis Olsen. Uh, well, uh, unfortunately, diving to the inside was Ayan Chan Guven, and it was a daredevil move going to the inside, making contact with the uh, Lucas Auer car. And, uh, well, it looks like Ayan Chan has got away virtually unscathed, but the same cannot be said of uh, Lucas Auer. And uh, that wasn't the only incident, as we could see there, from being on board. I think it was with uh, Maxi Gertz. Here's Mirko Portolotti then. Uh, dive to the inside. Um, and Kelvin van der Lede just getting uh, sideswiped there by uh, Mirko Portolotti. His race has gone from uh, bad to worse. And there you can see the uh, damage on the uh, number 63 car of Mirko Bordalotti for Lively as we go for this uh, restart once again. And I think Dennis Olsen is going to be the man to uh, chase down here. Ricardo Feller's looking good, but Thomas Bryan is doing a very good job at the restart and protects that inside line. I don't think Dennis Olsen has quite got the legs, or has he? Now, what, of course, Thomas Brining needs not to do now is get some contact from somebody at the rear. Rennie Rast just makes the car a little bit wide and almost loses out, but he maintains that P2 position. Uh, so we go on board with Rennie Rast now, chasing down uh, Thomas Brining. Lawrence Van Tour is up to uh, P3 in the other SSR performance. Uh, Porsche uh, relegating Dennis Olsen to P4. Himself and Rene Rast. And here comes Dennis Olsen trying to uh, get underneath now the Rene Rast car. But he needs to put himself right in front of the Rene Rast car as they go into the uh, Scholar S's. And Dennis Olsen, if he can maintain this momentum, this is going to give him a potential opportunity here. Rene Rast, I think he's got damage to the back end of the car and that might be what is uh, causing his pace to drop away now uh, Dennis Olsen obviously uh, managed to get by Lawrence Vantor so uh, Dennis Olsen trying to find a way by and uh, thus far has not been able to do so as he touches Rene Rast and Rene Rast gets uh, nerfed just a little bit but he holds on to it at the moment the uh, two SSR performance cars right behind now, Dennis Olsen and also Lawrence Vantor. And Rennie Rast is steadfast and trying to take advantage of it all is Maxi Gertz, ready like a viper to pounce as it all goes and lights up ahead of him. So is Maxi Gertz or Ricardo Feller going to be the big beneficiary of this fight that's going on? Uh, it is a three, four, five way fight for P2 at the moment. And of course, it's all playing nicely into the hands of Thomas Prining, who's up the road. So there's Rene Rast. There, I mean, he's probably driving a less than optimized car at the moment. Well, there you can see that is how hard the hit was on uh, Rene Rast. And I have to say, um, Dennis was very, very keen to get by, but and, uh, we're on board with Rene Rast now. How he is able to nurse this car and uh, maintain that P2 position is some testament to just what a great driver Rene Rast is. And that's how he had to control it with opposite. Uh, Thomas Prining heads towards the checkered flag and wins. It's the first ever DTM race win for Porsche.